Hello, the Rebel One, and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe, in which right now we are talking about the liberation of Scandinavia, which is great, great, great. So, finally, after all the bloods, deaths, destructions, and mental sufferings we've endured, the whole Scandinavian peninsula is at our hands now. Once again, the Reich stands a victor at the end of a war, and every other nation is now shocked and trembling before the Wehrmacht's awesome strength. Denmark, Norway, Sweden, under the leadership of our new big daddy, we've unified more Aryan... <coughs> nations and what we've done in the past world war though proud for the reich though our people and soldiers are indeed exhausted now and we still have to do the local resistance so before the new conquest we should take some time instructing the swedes adapting to the new uh, national daddy of slives and giving your people some rest let's enjoy our hard work in peace for now Ooh, we can do some daddy divisions or just send them home or i honestly like, we could really use some more stability. It's really not looking good for us. I mean, look at all that stuff that's hurting us. Uh, poverty's hurting us. Private health care. Registered voting. Allow, allow that S word. Uh, illegal trade union. State atheism. Four-year draft. You know, I think, as much as I want these really good divisions, I want to see if we can get a, just a little bit more stability for now. So if you wonder about these type of divisions, please go ahead. But send them home. The government of Sweden has surrendered. However, the flame of resistance in their soldiers' heart cannot extinguish easily. And because in uh, in our propaganda voices, they are our A, noble brothers, instead of our lower uh, <clears throat> races, we cannot just put them into concentration uh, places, like how we deal with those Slavic barbarians. Now it's clear that the only option left for us is just to dismiss them and let them return to their homes, and this will definitely help us maintain regional stability and decrease the danger of open rebellions, after all. Who is willing to die meaninglessly when his wife and children are sleeping quietly beside him? Expand the northern mines. The most valuable help that Sweden can provide for the Reich is its abundant metal materials. In the north of Sweden, there are dozens of metal mines that used to be owned by Swedish state enterprises, and their failure in the war has proven that it would be a waste to allow them to continue to control these mines themselves. Therefore, Germany has ordered that all mines in northern Sweden will be nationalized by the Reich immediately, and will be expanded to fulfill all the potential. As for the workers, those despicable people like resistance members, non-Aryan immigrants, and... Uh, political prisoners, uh, as well as resistance members, are going to be used as cheap uh, <clears throat> slave laborers as usual. Now, the whole world is trembling as a Swedish iron starts to reserve the Reich's war machine. I do apologize for having to, like, censor some of my words, especially within the first two ou hours, no, the first two minutes, just because Mama YouTube, Mama Susan doesn't like me saying these naughty, naughty words, so. But I like saying them. They're fun words, but Mama Susan's just like, nope. But, out of sight. In the northern part of Sweden, our slave camps are silently expanding while more and more slaves are transported there to work for the Reich. However, everything about the enslavement will be kept as our top secret. The Swedes may also be our brothers, but they have yet to see the benefits of our practices. Hence, the kinship and mutual respect between Germany and Sweden will be emphasized in a propaganda while the slave camps must be expanded further and faster and silently. Anyone who looks at anything about slavery will face great consequences for their careless behavior. If you can't keep your mouth shut tightly, fine. Then why don't you go to camp in person and serve the Reich more devoutly and carefully, then? Good points to bring up. As we continue with just a naval doctrine. And we're still bringing up, like, my, my worry is that we will not have enough fuel in the end. I think, are we training the Navy now? We might be training the Navy. Let's take a look. And, yes, we are. Um, I'm okay with that. I'm totally okay with training navies. Like, we need to have a really good Navy, so. But I'm just worried that we just will not have enough fuel for what we need. Because, like, we have a ton of transport planes, as you can tell, like. Helicopter divisions. We've got a ton of tanks, tons of motorized, tons of like literal fighters. We've got a ton of stuff going on here. So uh, I could boost it up to build more. Okay, we'll do it. Why not? But in exchange for that, boosting up a little bit more, we do get some more stability and stuff. I'm going to go and get two more civvies here. I want to get more civvies. I really, really do. You know, build a lot of infrastructure. Ah, oh, goes three. That's fine. We have enough for infrastructure as well, which is good. So after that, since we, since we have not taken the second surrender, I guess we just we can. I don't know if we can just wait here. This is very weird. Like I don't like how we just can just do nothing here. Well, we're not doing nothing, but you know, we're just doing stuff here. I want to save this one with the Odin program. We'll probably save that for a little later. Occupation starting work. Whether occupation of Hungary, the local po police, or populace, appears to object. While it's not a daily occurrence in some regions as Budapest, riots have been overwhelming garrison forces sent to quell them. A solution selected by the Führers donating some of our more outdated equipment, especially from the Soviet war, to military police and garrison regiments, so as to ensure the efficient running of our operations in the region. And it looks like Omsk failed, so we will be fighting the WRF. I, uh, is Sablin still alive? Sablin might still be alive, so... That, that would be really good if he was. I, I would love for Goring to fight Valerie Soblin. I think that'd just be awesome. Would that not be super cool? Um, I don't want to boost it up anymore for now, but we'll be okay. Cool. Yep, Soblin's over there. Far Eastern Soviet Republic. Look at that. That that, that man. Some call him handsome. Handsome? Handsome. Others don't. But it all is what it is in the end. Cool. 
Nice. All right, looking very, very good. Occupation, of course, is trying to work. But let's come up here. I, okay, so right now, we're going to beeline through. Uh, oh, maybe not. Let's do Power of the Atom first. The atomic bomb, the weapon which won the war, proof of the superiority of the Aryan race. The gods had aided us in a quest for world domination decades prior through the gift of heavenly power. Yet, in the decades following the end of the Second World War, our opponents have regrettably achieved this godlike power. Thus, Fira Goring has decreed that research and development shall commence on the construction of an atomic bomb with far greater destructive power. Some have called this hypothetical prototype the Fira Bomba. Followed up with, because I won't get through this stuff, because I want to do greater projects ahead. Two hundred billion dollars until the end of the project. Jesus Christ, that's so much. I love it. Ah, electronics research. Oh, Gabroshin five, Gabroshin five off the radar. Geheim. Oh, oh, uh, oh, this is not good. Oh, this is the stuff between us and the Americans. If you want to read about this. Uh, you know, I want to read about this. I don't remember this one. Approximately one hour ago, one of our early warning radar stations at Wilhelmshaven reported the disappearance of an Iceland-based American B-52 bomber. The bomber was being tracked as it was on a standard patrol over neutral waters on the Norwegian Sea. It is believed that the aircraft has most likely crashed in the ocean with the fate of the crew currently unknown. According to analysts in the OKL w, or Technical School or Office, it is highly likely that such an aircraft would be carrying at least one American thermonuclear device. Given that such a device would have landed in neutral waters, we will be within our rights to claim a salvage if we obtain it first. Such a discovery would yield critical insights into the American nuclear weapons program, and perhaps even give us a technical edge. Additionally, the blow to American prestige would be enormous, especially if the crew members survive and rescued by us. We recommend that you authorize a naval and air detachment to be sent at once. Let's go get the bomb, and apparently there's nothing here for electronics. Investments in the field of electri electrical infrastructure will allow us to construct greater, more ambitious electrical plants to channel the power of the atom. And just because I want to save here, because I want to make sure that we win for the uh, detente with this, with the Americans, who are still led by RFK. His second term. So he hasn't been assassinated, but I, wasn't it right that if you do this, you get to a second term for RFK, he can be as liberal as he possibly wants. I think I could be wrong about that, but that'd be really fun, though. Yeah, I didn't play as RFK again. Um, I want to make sure that we're always at least working on two refineries, if at all possible. Ah, Americans make their demands. Geheim. It's official. The Americans know that we know about the crash of B-52. After a series of intense back-channel discussions between American officials and representatives of our government, the Americans' demands have now been made clear. They want us to withdraw our ships and aircraft from the Norwegian Sea and to not interfere in their own efforts to salvage a bomb. Given that they were sending their aircraft to patrol near our airspace, this is obviously a preposterous demand, however. The threat of American escalation is clear. If we carry on with this plan, we may be risking heightened tensions at best and all a conflict at worst. Should we withdraw our flotilla and accede to American demands, or should we push on towards the intelligence coup of the decade? Why would we do... Papa Goring is a man of the people. We're going to escalate, escalate, escalate until the world burns, literally. What's the point of doing it if you're, not, if you're just not going to make the world go kaboom? And getting some advanced landing craft would be good as well, so. They let us pass. Geheim. After a series of tense back channel discussions between American officials and representatives of our government, we have reached a settlement. The American government has agreed to allow our flotilla to enter the Norwegian Sea and salvage with B-52 and the nuclear weapon. Provided that we leave any surviving crew alone, evidently. They are intimidated enough by our show of force and decided the potential cost was not worth it. This is a massive coup for us, providing new insight into American avionics and nuclear weapons technology. Our aircraft and vessels are already approaching the likely wrecked site. Within the next several days, the Reich will have triumph in the standoff without a shot fired. Sieg im Dazi. Nice. Actually, Italy is by itself, so cool. I think we probably should attack Italy eventually. Um, I do want to get this stuff done, like I said, but... We still need to do less stuff, so we're going to wait for that. Um, I know Italy's in the next stage for us, so just keep pushing. That'd be kind of nice. <laughs> all superstitions be darned, just keep pushing men. I don't want to do all this stuff, but I hope we have enough time for all that. Because I'd love to do all it. I really do. I really, really do. Oh, I didn't do this one yet. Yeah, I don't want to attack them all. That's not fun. War plan B. We've succeeded in the conquest of the British Isles. Well. Oh, well. But let's go with electronics research. Cool. This is going to be a long campaign, just to let you know. But infrastructure planning. Improving the Reich's infrastructure is vital to our ability to refer the innovating conquest from or conquer. From Frankfurt to East Prussia, our largely des uh, destroyed infrastructure network must be consolidated and outright rebuilt We are, if we are to successfully achieve a rightful place on the global stage. Thus, as best we begin planning for new generation roads, railways, and power lines, so that the GGR may hopefully commence construction on new and improved nuclear pro uh, power plants. Yes. Investments in the field of industry will allow us to design and build greater, more ambitious nuclear power plants. We're totally going to be only using them for good. For our good. Civil War, nice. Oh, actually, oh, do we get to help them out? Oh, this is going to be, oh, I like it. Then it doesn't even matter if we help them out, though. Let's be real. Like, it doesn't even matter. It really doesn't. We have a lot of PP. Get more army war games. The other stuff we don't really need. The Yemen Arab Republic. A civil war broken out in the Sandy Mountains, wasteland known as the 
Muto Wakilite Kingdom of Yemen. It's in our interest to support the rebels fighting against the remote Arabian Kingdom. The rebels are fighting for an Arab Republic in the name of ideology named Ba'atism, which is a pan-Arab nationalist and pseudo-socialist movement which whose ideological intricacies are very complex and complicated. What is important is that if they are challenging Italian and uh, Saudi influence in the oil-rich Gulf region, factions of their movement are sympathetic to Germany. If we send aid to these Ba'atist rebels and they successfully topple the Italian lapdog of a monarch, we can see our own geopolitical influence and economic power expanded. And other Peace on the global chessboard. So if we help them out, they will be isolated from everyone else since they will be under the wing of Italy. So that actually might be really good. Whoa. Whoa. There's more here. And explosive entrance. The German Marines landed on Sardinia, Crete, and Cyprus. Landing on them are instructed to obliterate their Italian ports. Artillery shells, rigged explosives, Luftwaffe bombs. They ruthlessly pound every last ship and pier until nothing is left. Not one boat, not one sailor, not anything remains. Plenty of collateral damage wrecks the downtowns of Cal Cagliari, Heraklion, and Limassol. But the Marines, artillerymen, and pirates do not care. The ports now wiped off the face of the earth are of no use to the German armed forces. But the German generals do not care. We've shown the talent of might. Pure destruction. Um, we own one nuclear reactor and are spending $70 million per nuclear reactor per month. Stats are updated monthly. I didn't realize that, huh? All right. Power for the civilian sector. I kind of like that one. Six nuclear reactors to take this decision. Decision. Ooh, that's not bad. Power for the military sector. Show off to the world. Show off our nuclear program to the world to humble all other countries before the might of the Reich. Negotiation with, or negotiate with military factories. Increase loyalty. Okay. Close on coal plants. Nice. Italy wants a new region for Hungary. The towns have been actively promoting their interest in Hungary and now have moved to replace the current region. Bella and Reddy, where their own candidate is Svan Horthy. The coup's success would mean an extension of the Italian influence over Budapest and would be detrimental to our own interests there. As such, we can act decisively to stop the coup. And on the other hand, there are certainly more pressing matters to deal with at home. Perhaps the uh, effort required would not be worth it? Uh, I, eh? Oh, we can get involved. Do I want to get involved? I'll be honest. Do I really care? No, I really don't. I really just don't care. Um, I'm sorry. I just, I just can't really care right now. I'm mean, we could say guys, and it'd be good for Eric's. Well, well. Yeah, I don't, I don't care. We're gonna take him out anyway. So who cares about Yemen? Yeah, seriously. Sorry if you're from Yemen, but you know, still. And are you guys doing okay? Yes, you are. You've done training. You guys are looking not great, but I don't want to train because they're gonna lose stuff. Probably. You guys are looking fabulous. Oh my goodness, so good, so good. All right, infrastructure planning. I would like to get more conquests, but I'm, I'm going to try to rush through this this part of the focus tree as fast as possible, though. A computer's machine or device that performs pro processes, calculations, and operations based on instructions provided by a software or hardware program. In the context of atomic development and planning, we've already seen preliminary studies that demonstrate the efficiency of computer-based programs in testing and refining our projections. The GGCRI has come to conclude that we must digitize our efforts if we are to achieve relative success. Thus, we should design and upgrade nuclear plants with a computer instead of relying on ballpark estimates, thereby improving the construction process. Absolutely. Even though we do have a limited amount of time, because Italy does get nuclear weapons. But that's going to be a while. I, I, I don't understand. Uh, I don't know. And don't get me wrong, we're pretty much ready to go into these guys anyways, but still. Like, they're not going to be super easy to beat, too, but still. Can we just get some nuclear powered tanks? That's all we want, right? It's not bad. We're making three. Let's get it down to two, maybe. Keep spinning for now. It's fine. And get one more of these. And boom. Infrastructure planning, followed with that, and make them grow like mushrooms. Nuclear reactors shall be built around the country to power both the people and our new experiments. That sounds pretty good. Public concern will rise. That's all right. Ooh. Once we start this focus, we have a limited opportunity to get the military and Kriegsmarine involved in the project. This opportunity goes away once the focus ends. Oh, so we probably want to do that together then. Start a grand revaluation, update the equipment granted to our infantry. Away with the Felgrau? 
I know we want to go to war more. I know. I I want to go to war too, but let's go through this one first. The concept of atomic plans largely, up until this point, regrettably found itself constrained by largely environmentalist and conservationists' concerns. However, the fear has chosen to disregard its previous ethos of actually choosing to enjoy and protect the environment, which is uh, <clears throat> useless to waging effective warfare. Instead, with the fear's blessing, we shall improve the Reich's nuclear program through the construction of dozens of new power plants all across the Vatalam, irrespective of population density or environmental beauty. This will speed up the GGR's fledging program of nuclear development and advancement. And also bring those who care about the so-called environment and health of the German nation out into the open, where we can all trade their placards for long-deserved jail sentences. Very nice. Um, I guess yeah, you're there now too. Nice. All right, thank you, Rama. Thank you, thank you. Crosses in Nanjing. That is unfortunate for them. Death of Ho Chi Minh. So be it. So we got a lot of manpower, which I love, love, love. There you go. Just because I want to just throw these guys on there. I think it's super easy for us. I don't want to deal with them, right? No one wants to deal with them. Cool, and let's see the next here. Digital architecture will be more research speed. Yeah, it's gonna be a long focus tree. Like this probably will be the longest time I've, I've done a campaign. Probably, we'll see, but probably. Cool, Gotland's looking pretty good. Africa still exists, except for uh, Uganda sucks, but whatever. So let's go ahead and do this one, and I'm gonna go ahead and read about Militärwissenschaft. If it can, wishes to maintain its hegemony for the millennium that was promised to it by Adolf Hitler, the Reich must maintain its edge in the tools of warfare. Many things have changed since the days of 1940 when our panzers overran the Poles, the French and Russians now the main battle tank, and the helicopter are the tools of the bloody trade. It must be developed quickly alongside conventional firearms if we wish to dominate our enemies. Of course, the branches of the Wehrmacht jealously guard their little secrets, unwilling to let rivals within the military gain their advantage, and thus more funding. The Führer may be a master of the Reich, but even he may be hard-pressed when such stubborn fools are involved. Centralizing the military every day. Dozens of letters and papers would pile upon the big daddy's desk every day. He went through them, glancing over each small complaint. However, there were two letters in particular that Papa Hermann Göring was waiting on. A letter from the OKH, located in Germania, and a letter from the Kriegsmarine, fo Locus, Locus? located in Theodor Rexhofen. When the two came in one day, Big Daddy Herman cited all the other priorities to read them. It had been quite the pain to wrestle the two high commands into handling over the R&D departments, while Shona's followers seemed more than eager to get started on their projects. Shona himself was uncharacteristically cautious on the matter, attempting to convince his followers not to dive headlong into the projects. Goring sighed at the thought of it. It seemed Shona had at least seen that there was something going on behind the scenes, hopefully. Though Goring... A thought goring, his hot will went out over his brain. Similarly, much of the Sp Spiderlight faction seemed happy enough to gain more control over this research efforts. But Spider seemed to be auspicious, so suspicious. A little sus of such a blatant move to placate the military. Goring had to give credit where credit was due. Spider was no slouch when it came to brains. I could tell that Goring was not showing his full hand. In any case, both branches had been quite evenly split on the support or opposition to the GDRWI. Perhaps it was why those letters had taken so long to arrive in any case. Goring hoped for the best as he tore open the first one. For once, he'd be doing the trickery and not the other way around. Let's all go well. Hopefully it does go well. So, All right, weapons of the third Valkyrie. Revaluation of weapons. Someone did say we should get the Liger. I want to at least go down this way first, so we can at least get Masters of Death, Masters of Light, and the Sun Gun. So, weapons of the third Valkyrie. The decision to determine the armament focus priority is quite possibly the most influential decision of our decade. Through the invention of new weapons of warfare and destruction, we will more effectively subdue and destroy the enemies of the GGR, whose numbers increase by the day. Yeah. When determining the future of the warfare, a quote from the dis dissident Jewish scientist Albert Einstein comes to mind. I know not what weapons World War III will be fought, but World War IV will be fought with sticks and stones. The head declines through the glorious fear of heaven goring. We here in the OKW, or actually the OKH, have given serious thought to your request. We would like to point out that our research and development department is one of the best in all of Germany and does not need additional oversight from the civilian government. Despite how Ozenberg's arguments, we do not believe that we need to give up our research and development department for increased efficiency when it's already such an efficient and organized part of the hair. As such, we are afraid that we must decline requests for, to us to transfer our research and department to you. I would personally like to point out that Goring snorted and slid the paper to the side. The Hairs Research Department, efficient and organized. What a joke. Goring knew that that was a lie. Shona knew that was a lie, but apparently the rest of the Hairs had, did not. Whatever Shona had said to get this point across, it clearly worked on these fools. This was no fatal blow. Goring had the time, patience, and money to get what he wished for. Even though some, what, actually legal measures, will certainly put it in military research. The fear sighed before turning to the next letter, hoping it would be more positive than this last. Let's hope this is good. Ooh, that really sucks. We lose pickle power, armor. We lose a lot of research speed. That really sucks, man. 
The hero agrees, though, due to Gloria's fear of human goring. We here in the OKH have given Sirius such a request. We'd like to point out that uh, our R&D department is one of the best in all of Germany. It does not need additional oversight from the civilian government. It's almost exactly the same. However, Herr Osenberg has argued his point strongly, and it appears that our heads have elected to hand over our R&D department to the GDRWI. Herr Osenberg has promised that our projects will be on high priority for this new department, and we trust that you will follow through with your support and his claims. I'd personally like to caution you on goring toss the letter to the side in triumph. Apparently, we got two letters in a single day. Or, I guess, one, the first time they did just, you know, they said no, and then the next day they said yes. He didn't need to read the rest. Undoubtedly, a tirade from Chorum himself, angry that Goring had outmaneuvered him and not the other way around. It did not matter, and Goring did not have to need to trouble himself with such negativity instead. He moved his hand to the next letter, the one from Theodore Rexoff, and opened it. Hopefully, he thought it would be more positive as last. One of them sees reason, at least. Every 33% GGRSCI corruption will make the militaries lose more power, but increase the chance the militaries' concern will rise. Oh crap, hopefully nothing happens. Where are we at right now? Also, I had to reload the save because I made a mistake. Actually, I didn't make a mistake, it just didn't go super, super great, so. Um, cool. I don't care about that airborne, I'll be honest. Point 0.15, okay? Okay, Whew. Point 0.15. The Krieg Marine accepts. To the glorious fear of Big Daddy, I'm going. The Critics Marine is taking your request with the seriousness that it deserves, after all. Such a major change to our research department would require much work, bureaucratic change, and a lot of money spent on our organization. There is also some consternation at your true reasons for this change. Some of our admirals seem to think that this is but an attempt to placate the military, however. Yeah, Ozenberg's arguments have resonated throughout our highest officers. As such, we have decided to acquiesce to your request, and the Critics Marine's research facilities will be transferred into the GDRWI's administration. We would like to note that. Goring tossed us later to the side and joined its hair counterpart and smiled. The pieces were all coming together soon. The Kriegsmarine's resources would join the GDRWIs and then the plan could truly begin. As he rose to get his overcoat, he said it was a good day to find Venna and get another drink together. The man deserved it for his efforts. Absolutely, and I'm saving the game just in case because this seems very successful so far. I don't want a lot of corruption, but we'll see what happens. And brilliant. Same thing. Actually, it's point one five, right? Every 33% corruption will make the military lose more power. Alright. Ah, we got more concerned. God dang it. We have two nuclear reactors and are spending $7 million per nuclear reactor per month. So we can avoid public eye in Ukraine. By building reactors in Ukraine, we can cut the cost of those reactors in half without public becoming scared. That seems extremely, as some might say, sus, just because what happens if we just move the nuclear reactor to the Ukraine? What if it just shows up in your backyard? Is this a bad thing to do? Let's do it anyways. Pump out more reactors. Okay, we just get one. We just make a civilian nuclear reactor. Okay. Away with the fell ground. The question of potential Wehrmacht uniform innovation troubles our military planners at night, and for some god known reason, it's the best that our government establish its position on the matter with haze indeed. And what's been referred to as the Away with Fell Grau net row. Certain officials within the Wehrmacht have recently argued against the continuation of Felgrau. Conservative figures within the organization continue to have confidence in the great, pushing against what they see as excessive and unnecessary interference from staff's stuff suits. Of course, this falls to the decision of Fear Goring, although we are unsure of bringing as much such a minor decision to him as not itself a demonstration of ineptitude. What is this? Uh, Oaken decrease overall concern. Military concern will drop, but public concern will drop. Wait, what? That's 150 days. That's not bad. Um, it's really not that bad. Decrease public concern. Corruption will increase a little bit more, and I don't want that much corruption. So, that first public, uh, first meeting, meeting, the committee meeting. Welcome, friends, to the first session of the Equipment Revaluation Committee. Polite applause from the room. Scientists, generals, and bureaucrats all packed around the table, all listening to Osenberg's words. He smiled as the applause died down. Finally, his dream for the right science was coming together. I'd like you all to give a similar welcome to my coach and colleague, General Leutnant Otto Reimer. Reimer stood to a similar level of applause, though it was clearly concentrated more on the general's side of the table. Osenberg smiled, but one could tell it was a bit forced if they looked hard enough. Reimer was showing his way of keeping his thumb on the research, and it was certainly going to be a pain in the deal with. Nothing is perfect, Osenberg thought. When, he, when his applause died down, Osenberg began to speak. Our first topic will be on the subject of the standard infantry rifle. This is less than the quality of their current rifle, more than the quantity of them. Many of our frontline soldiers are still equipped with older mo models of rifles. I've even heard reports that some are carrying G43s. This is absolutely unacceptable. But the question is how far how about we go fixing it? My suggestion is that we transfer guns from the garrisons to make up for the deficit, but some new, build some new ones, and replace the oldest guns with newer models to make up for the gap. It won't fully solve our issues, but it'll be economically sound. All in favor? 
mumbling and debate running ran around the table. Osenberg watched. He never expected such a suggestion to be a unanimous agreement, but he let out a small sigh when Raymer got to his feet. I must respectfully disagree, Herr Osenberg, Raymer said with a grin. We can't let our armies of prides of the Reich be equipped with suboptimal equipment any longer, in my opinion. We must be better armed than our opponents, shouldn't we? I propose that we devote as many resources as possible to rearming our soldiers with the best of the Reich has, no matter the cost. No soldier should die because he must carry a bolt action into battle. More applause. After the table settled down, a bolt was held. The first battle in the committee would soon reach a conclusion. Weimar wins out. Produce 25,000 infantry equipment on top of the ones required by the equipment revaluation. More corruption military consumer will rise. A compromise is reached. Produce 25,000. Anyways. Um, um, I don't want any more corruption, so. Osenberg prevails. Also, we get spending will increase. Where, is there anything here we can see about spending? Am I missing it? I might be missing it. Approval is high. That's good. Me power is medium. Very low influence, though. Um, how do we. Is there anything we can see about this? I don't. I don't know. I, I want to see something about this. Because this is all we got. I mean, yeah, we got this, two nuclear reactors. We can extend equipment and revaluation period. Military consumer rise, 50 days adapting the. Ooh. Um, Nineteen seventy, which is nice. Reestablishing the party. Look at that, nice. I honestly don't know. I really just do not know. Um. That is... How, how long does this last? Military consumer will rise. Downgrade rations. Every more corruption will make the militaries lose more power. Decrease the power of the militaries by a small amount. Decrease the loyalty, though. Eh, that's not really worth it. Utilize military economic control. Military industrial production, participation will increase. But I don't want to increase the power of the military, so... Um, Osenberg. I kind of like Osenberg. I don't want to get more corruption in military concern, so... 25,000 additional... How much do we produce every single day? Because is it... Will this be a concern of ours? Um, how many guns? Guns. 44 a day. 44 a day? By the reevaluation. I think I'll just... Let's go big or go home, right? I don't want that one. This one's okay. Let's, let's see. Where, where, where does that pop up? How many more guns do we need? Do we need any more? I, I literally don't even know. Oh! We must have at least 18,000... Oh my gosh. We need that many, but we've already completed it, so... That's a t that's a crap load of guns. Jesus Christ. Okay, well, I'm, I'm glad we got it done. Yeah, good job, guys. We got it done. First one done. Guns of the future. The Mauer C-96, the Gewehr 43, the Schirmgewehr 44. All these and more were products of German genius, and they carried the sons of the Vaterland to victory after victory in the many battles. These weapons were the tools of the First and Second World Wars, but the battles of the Third seemed closer than ever. When that time comes, the men of the Reich cannot be sent into battle with anything less than the perfection afforded only by Aryan science. Herr Olsenbuck has been given permission to fund as much research and development as is necessary to design state-of-the-art personnel equipment uh, for our brave soldiers. Oh, we lost, lost that weekly stability and worst part stuff. That sucks. I do want to get the Liger, but we'll see what happens. Oh, this is actually seven days. That's actually really nice. That's so much faster. The fell growl debate. Raymond stood across the table towards Olsenberg. In between them, the members of the committee shifted nervously in their seats. It had only been a few weeks since the founding of the committee, and already its two heads seemed to be in the direct opposition to each other. Nobody was really surprised by this development, but for it to have happened so quickly, not a good sign for the future. General Lieutenant Raymond, I don't see why the fell growl we currently use is must have such a sweeping overhaul. It's proven capable in the field. Such emotion seems like a simple waste of time to me. Moments of agreement rippled through the civilian side of the table as Osenberg leaned back in his chair. Rayma scowled and leaned into the table. Do you not understand that we must advance in all fields here, Osenberg? The Reich must lead the world in all fronts, not just weaponry. If a man or not hit him, what is the use of weaponry or machinery? No. We must forge ahead, no matter the cost. You look too much at the Reichsmacht and not enough at the materials. Osenberg. I know that many of our highest ranking military men would prove such a change, and they know the art of war more than you, if I may, may say so. Chuckles and clapping from the generals of Osenberg do not move. General Lieutenant, I just don't see the point of it. Nobody except for the OKH and yourself is clamoring for a change. That was a cost of millions of research. Well, why don't you just put it to a vote then? See this. See what this committee thinks. That's the point of it, is it not? Raymond Smod, the project is passed. A new look produce 10,000 more infantry equipment on top of the ones re required. That's not bad. The project struck down. I like that one. Streamline textile production. We get more political power that we don't need, but... Go big or go home, right? Close down coal plants. 
Um, well, I guess we'll do the next one too. Redevelop the arsenal. At the height of the Second World War, the Reich was producing thousands of rifles per week, millions of bullets, and hundreds of heavier munitions. The crash of the 50s put an end to all that, however, the factories emptied and were shuttered, and uh, the production lines went silent. That's all about to change, however, the fear daddy has announced a conference of the top arms manufacturers to take place in Zolson. There, the greatest military industrialists of the age will convene to return the workers to the factories, and the factories to the way are footing. Every soldier will have to enough materials to eliminate ten enemies, and each gun produced will be worth ten dozens of theirs. The world will soon remember why it feared the sound of German guns. Do we have anything else here? We have the war cabinet, no. Saving off the inevitable, no. I don't know, this doesn't feel like it's fully done yet. I could be wrong, but still. Okay, we adapted the infantry. We just needed 200,000 guns. That's all. Just, just a casual 200,000. But, my friends, happy 1970. This can only be a good year for us, right? Only a good year. But this is Austin Arms Conference. Today, they have met to the Proving Grounds outside of Zossen, along with the Führer and the select members of the Greater German Reich Council on Scientific Innovation to discuss weapon innovations. Select weapon manufacturers are also demonstrating their new designs. Rheinmetall Bolsig demonstrated an improvement on the design being worked on during the war, the high-low pressure system, which has allowed them to create a 40mm projectile that can be fired by an infantryman. In conjunction with Mauser, they have also demonstrated a grenade machine gun capable of halting an infantry assault dead in its tracks inflicting serious damage to trench lines. Hugo Schneider AG has demonstrated a design of a wire guided anti tank missile launcher light enough to be moved by infantry forces. The new missile is accurate to all one and a half kilometers and capable of destroying any decadent capital tank on a clean hit. Right and Mauser have the right idea. Ooh, 10,000 on top of what we want required. We get some better rifles, get two more military factories. Hugo Schneider's missile design is what we need. I like that one too. Every time I hear the word finance, I'm ready. I reach for the Luga, adopt both designs immediately. Uh, do we have an artillery? Jesus Christ. Go big, go home. Slave made guns. Slave participation will go up. We can lose attack and defense. That sucks. Um, anything else here? Outsource the uniform production? Uh, corruption will increase by 5%. Foreign work participation goes up. Um... Wait, oh, we lose two military factories, but the India gets it. That's kind of funny. What's the... Uh, oh. We must have at least... A uh, support equipment sort Oh. Um, do we need to get more support equipment then? I think we're okay, right? I think we should be okay. Wow, we have like none. Holy crap. Okay, whatever. Um, greater projects ahead. With our achievement of true Arianism, it's best we move on to far greater and increasingly grander projects ahead of us. We shall begin our ascent into eternity by pouring considerable amount of Reichsmox into such mechanical projects. About, ah, just uh, a fifth, 20% of a trillion... The mocks and the fantastic godlike concept of the sun gun, which appears long believable to secure German security once and for all, once built. The GGR and its fear shall control the ways and the rays of life itself, which will be as gods, and nothing will be restrained from us which we have imagined to do. Don't tell the church about that last part, though. The Sonder Sonnengewehr initiative will cost us more than 200 billion US dollars until the end of the project. A stronger, better, and uh, bigger panzer. The panzer compound is the backbone of the Blitzkrieg tactic, a ma machine so powerful that we cannot afford a so called phasing out of this valuable arm. It will also be remarkably expensive to draw upon usage of the machines, or draw down usage of the machine, a truth we've chosen to downplay for the papers. Rather, Phil Goring has decreed that we shall develop a, and we quote, bigger, better, and stronger panzer that shall be deployed in future conflicts. Thus, the time has come to an end. Once and again, innovate the ancient Aryan steel super weapon. From the German axis of the panzer, German steel has shattered and shatter all. All arrayed against it. I guess we're okay. <laughs> I maybe should have waited to do this one. Masters of Death. Given our abundance of missiles and rocket technological blueprints, it's best we look at our prior designs when contemplating how to best launch a sun gun in orbit. We must balance ambition and prudence. How large will the orbital mirror be and how fine tune its albedo while without running the risk of failure design? Yep, without indulging our ambitions, we don't achieve godlike status, and so it's best we hurl like joyful martial children into the sun on development of the sun gun. The future awaits! This could actually like be the campaign where everything dies for us. Like, like economically. Like, I've never like hit... Uh, as, you, as you can tell, I'm building a lot of cities just because of how bad the GDP is right now. But, like, I've never had a campaign where I've screwed up so bad that the economy just collapses in, a, in a itself. So, this is going to be that campaign. We'll see what happens. Oh, we'll see what happens. <sighs> The 
the Lager Sass development. The lead engineer waved, uh, wavered as he watched the two most important men in German science go through the team's designs. The, the eyes did not meet his, instead glued to the blueprint laid down on the table, tracing the lines and numbers that made up the tank, Olsenberg's eyes shot to the name, the Liger. In the opinion of a scientist, this is an ideal tank, my fear. Brilliant agility, great speed, and the firepower to destroy anything the Americans or Japanese can muster. If the project goes ahead, I can guarantee that this will only bolster our armies. The scientist stuttered. Goring did not address his remarks, instead turning to Olsenberg, who had still not moved. Hey, Olsenberg, what do you make of this design? He asked. It's terrible, Olsenberg grunted. What about it? Goring replied. Crap, Herman, look at the bad word thing. Two guns, the terrible armor, the weight. That's as big as a tiger and half as useful. There's nothing good in it. The scientist began to defend himself, but Goring cut him off with a wave of his hand. No, 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 no. Venom, Venom, Venom. I don't think you see the potential here. That's a blueprint. A prototype, isn't it? Goring kept going before the man could answer. Sure, there are flaws, but I see a lot of potential in this. Could you imagine the American reaction to getting run over by twin gun heavy, heavy tanks at 70 kilometers an hour? He turned to the engineer, addressing him directly for the first time. This meeting. Tell your men to get work on on this Liger. I'm confident in your success. See here. Counts on it. Even as the engineer stammered out of short, Yes, my Fuhrer, a faint groan of displeasure left Olsenberg's lips. The future's now. Given her abundance of missile and rocket technological blueprints, it's best we look at her prior designs so we can contemplate how to best launch a sun gun in orbit. Did I just read this one? Yeah. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's best we heard of, like, joyful martial children in the final development of the sun gun. The future awaits. My, my apologies. I just, at the time of this recording, I'm actually very tired. But, Masters of Light. Of course, the sun gun name is quite self-explanatory. It's a planetary atmospheric laser gun, which, of course, requires a power source. Also self-explanatory. We're going to use the power of the sun itself to annihilate our ideological opponents. The foundational technology of the solar and focus energy technology are known to us. What is needed is a massive increase in scale. To this end, we should invest considerable resources into laser and solar technology research and development to ensure the success of the sun gun. We're also going to pump up the threatening rhetoric. We never never let it be said that we neglect the stick for the carrot. Playing up the budget. The Songavan is a precarious project which I'll run the constant risk of failure, over budgeting and simple collapse. The Fear will have to manage balancing as many proposed features of the Sun Gun, practical or otherwise, while maintaining a surplus of cash to flow towards the marking of the Wonder Weapon. Test the puppeting skills? We shouldn't bother. Okay. The Sun Gun! The time has come, and like Icarus performed, Deutschland will shall ascend into the heavens. After considerable time of continued development, attempts and failures, and uh, multiple failures and brushed off instabilities, we finally have achieved the goals of Fuhrer Homer Goring and propelled the GGR to an unstoppable military force while also achieving superpower status once more in the eyes of the world. Indeed! The time has come for the Aryan race to reclaim its uh, rifle position as the highest race on the Earth. Prepare the main panel network here, Doctor. Single network recognition, you may fire when ready. Upgrading the Sun Gun, some of our top scientists working on the Sun Gun have approached us and approached the Fuhrer with a vital decision requiring his approval. Usually, minor matters wouldn't concern the administration, but the proposal brought before Goring requires a significant amount of funding if approved. The scientists, with a bit of modification to the base design, are able to attach a significant amount of solar panels onto the base platform, which would greatly increase the overall efficiency in theory. The downside is the cost. Solar panels are very expensive, and this modification to the satellite would greatly increase the already great costs. The scientists are arguing that an investment is well worth the cost, and that we shouldn't cut corners on the project. This begs two questions. Are we able to and willing to shell out the capital? The base design is good enough. What? What? No! I want more! More! Flying machines. The latest trend in aviation warfare is a helicopter. Relatively small and able to fulfill a variety of design purposes, it seems to serve admirably in militaries across the globe. Prior to the Civil War, the Reich had not been able to invest in airborne assets, as some had hoped, largely due to mounting budgetary concerns. Now that much of the fat in the counts have been spared down, however, Osenberg has been given a free hand to establish more dedicated R&D sites across Germany to further elucidate where the helicopter can best serve the Reich's armies. Cool. Also, I do want to let you know, like, we're going to get on a lot of debt. Like, so much debt that it might break the game. Or it might break us. It's probably going to break us. But the sun gun, because we love it. Power for the civilian sector? Oh, well, active, not bad. Spending increased by 125 million? That seems pretty good. Power for the military sector? Add my... Oh. Public concern will rise. Oh. What's the concern right now? That's not... That's not bad. Uh, Avoid public... Iron. Sure. Pump up more reactors? Why not? Fully switch nuclear power. We need 80 nuclear reactors. Replace digital architecture with nuclear power nation. Jesus, bad work. Oh my gosh, that sounds awesome. Get okay, way more political power, consumer goods, synthetic oil, fuel gain per oil. Nuclear construction speed goes way down, but holy crap. I'm remove power focus. Huh. Oh. Okay, so we need all that support equipment. If not completed within 160 days, corruption will rise, greatly decrease the loyalty. Oh, I didn't realize that was bad. Oh. And stockpile. Okay, then. Okay, so the, we... I mean, we're halfway through already, so that's not really too bad. So we go down to one. 
for that. You, you can go way higher if you need to eventually. Um, also, someone did say I could just do this instead, so there you go. 200, that makes it so much nicer. Uh, go down to 1. Go down to 1. Go down to 20 for now. We're going to just go back up to how much we actually really do need, so... Uh, planes are going to be actually totally fine for now, too, so I'm going to cut everything down for now. We're going to need a lot of aluminum, but that's okay. There you go. Look at that. 50 a day, we should be able to get there within, like, what, half a year? Within half a year? That's not bad. Hope we can do it. Stockpile is... Of supply, support equipment. 44 a day. 45 a day. So that's not too bad. A new tool for the infantry. Cool. The concept of Robert solved through the employment of helicopters is an admittedly recent innovation of warfare, yet a necessary one for the achievement of a swift, overwhelming tactical victory, particularly in an inaccessible and difficult terrain. Indeed, the increased usage and employment of helicopters in warfare may prove useful in assisting the further effectiveness of ground troop operations. Furthermore, by choosing to pioneer helicopters, we shall cement ourselves as the most efficient and technologically advanced armed forces on this planet, assisting us during this cold, cold, somewhat war. Nice. Good. Anything else here? Nice. We can get rid of a lot of this stuff then. I don't want to look at the debt. It's still not bad so far. At this point, just keep spending it then. Cool. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And then, to carry is your duty. Given the Fuhrer's pre uh, precedence decision to invest in the production of attack helicopters, it's best we also invest in some more mechanical contemporaries. Through some investment of resources into the research, development, and introduction of new transport helicopter designs will improve the efficiency of the Luftwaffe's fleet when attempting to transport materials and men to the battlefield and beyond. Due to the greater capacity, the helicopter shall be the mechanized truck of a new age. Nice. Yes. Yes. A thousand times yes. Get some more fleet coordination, too. And a fight is your command. Given the Fuhrer's initiative decision to invest in the production of transport helicopters, it's best we also invest in some more mechanical contemporaries indeed. Through investment of resources into the research, development, and introduction of new attack helicopter designs, we will also improve the efficiency of the Luftwaffe's fleet when we attempt to annihilate our enemies from the skies in warfare, accelerating our inevitable success. Let the blood of our en enemies rain from the sky. Strong. I've never seen this ever. This is the first time in any of my campaigns, I'm pretty sure. I've seen Strom Thurmond inaugurate as U.S. President. What? But I knew a Molta? The first thing any good tank needs is an engine. Simple enough, right? Maybe not, as it turns out, though. The largest tank engines we have for the Maus and Taga 2 are not nearly strong enough to power the scale on the Liga. Osnabrück won't be able to get the darn thing to move an inch unless significant resources are brought to bear to develop, to develop a state-of-the-art motor. Of course, that will simply increase the production cost per unit with all the other expenditures that would need to be added to the project. Let's get well start right out of the gate as a massive bond doggle. A bone doggle. Still, maybe we can work with the old designs a bit, make them a little more compatible, just enough so that the behemoth can head into the battle, and then we can probably hope for the best. So, um, anything else here? New helicopter doctrine? Okay, military concern will rise. More spending. Air accidents chance goes up more. Draft Germans into Luftwaffe. Well, this is okay. Anything else here? Not really. Um, concern, I'm not really con too concerned about too much. Uh, honestly, it keeps going up for numbers, but is there anything else here? Oh, we still need to do this one too, but that's okay. The engine question. The door swung open as an engineer walked into uh, Ausenberg's office, a stack of papers filling his hands, when Ausenberg gestured for him to set the papers down. He unceremoniously dropped them onto his desk, then aside and ran his hand through his hair. He could swear it was already thinning even faster than all of us. Is there a problem, he asked. Our efforts to improve upon the original L Liger design have hit a small snack. We've improved upon the engine. It's got more power, more speed, and can push the tank along at a quicker pace. So what's a catch, Ozenberg asked. He had a feeling he could already guess, but he wanted to hear it from the man himself. To produce this new re engine, we need more time and more money if you refuse. We'll do what we can to streamline the production of the old engine, but the speed of the tank may be a bit less. Ozenberg sighed again. He could already see it now. The Liger, an expensive money sink. A complete waste of time, and he catch all the blame for it. No matter what he was against the... 
the project from the start. Goring made sure as heck he wouldn't take the fall for him, friendly as the two were, of course. Perhaps the fundamental issues of the lag could be fixed or at least mitigated. With it, enough money in development, who knows, perhaps it would keep on something workable. Asking for more time and more money would be a pain, but if it saved the project, maybe it was worth it. Osenberg turned back to the man, his mind made up. Even as he spoke, he could tell that this would not be the last time a uh, request of this nature was made. I'll get you fun and get to work. Ooh, we're playing tanker search with panzer development stage 0 to 1. Ooh, yes. Just do what you can with the old one, will you? Oh, armor speed goes down, but... No compromises with quality tanks. And also, we've already finished up. Um, and to fight is your command, so... Eine harte Panzerung? Ooh, the Liger's armor will need to be top-notch given how large of a target it'll be. Everything from handheld anti-tank munitions to artillery and bombers will be coming after it in an attempt to remove our queen from the board. Oh, we, we love our queens here. Heck, they might even try using naval guns if they have a chance. Given all that we're going to be putting into this project, we can't have the units just crumpling under heavy fire. We ought to be able to withstand the fury of heck according to Fear Goring. And he wants no expense to spare for developing new polymers and composite metals in pursuit of this. Herr yeah, Osenberg has been given quite the task, but maybe, just for the sake of efficiency, he could just cut a few corners here and there. Well, Sounds like he, this guy needs to get fired if he's going to suggest stuff like that. I'm not Stakera Cannon? Or Cannon? Probably Cannon. Cool. Little day left. Great. The armor question. The engineer was back into Osenberg's office carrying another load of papers. Osenberg, currently in the middle of the second drink of the day, regarded him with an icy stare before setting the glass aside. What is it now? Osenberg grunted. We've had another sticking point here, Osenberg. We took your armor complaints into consideration and have developed a new armor composition to better protect our tanks. With this new armor, we believe that many of your concerns will be alleviated. The engineer spoke in a calm, rehearsed manner. Just Osenberg couldn't tell if it had been practice or his spiel, or if he was just always sounding like that. Engineers do tend to sound a bit robotic, he thought. And let me guess, Osenberg slid further back into his chair. It will cost money and time to actually make this new armor in. I'll need to go back the fear for a few more Reichsmox. The engineer stammered, his flow interrupted. Uh, yes, something like that. If you don't give us a funding, we will do what we can with what we have, the armor. The armor might be less functional. Yes, yes, I can guess that, Osenberg groaned. You know, one has to wonder how this could be the ultimate tank design if it needs so many rebooks. You signed off on it, sir. Osenberg didn't bother to try and explain the whole fiasco. It's a money seeker already. Use what we have, stage 0 to 2. Even less division defense. Cost goes way down. All right, get to work on the new armor. That's extremely high. Holy crap. 40% more? For 10% more defense? That's a really bad idea to do that. But you know what? We could always make more, more millies, right? Probably not, but... I'm going to sacrifice defense. Are we missing something? The Panzer Kampf Bagen MBT improvement project has thankfully come to its completion, having run its course smoothly and without difficulty. However, this has caused worry amongst a few military circles, who doubt the project's seeming success. Uh, yet, despite our misgivings, it's best we don't inform the Fuhrer and Schorner about it, as we're quite sure that there will be totally nothing wrong with the Panzer. We'll take the additional measure of uh, making our designers sign non disclosure agreements for the good of the right, to prevent morale losses from any potential leakers. It's for the best, really. The gun question. I like guns. Osenberg tossed the paper to the engineer, had handed him back onto his desk. He downed the rest of his whiskey glass before continuing. Lord knows he needed it. So now there's an issue with the guns, hmm? What else uh, is wrong with the darn thing? He spat venom at the engineer whose eyes are now as wide as the dinner plates. Well, the guns are functional enough as it is, the engineer stuttered. Not used to seeing the normally plastic Osenberg this angry. Then what are you doing here, Osenberg roared. <clears throat> oh, my bad. Uh... He crumpled the report and threw it at the engineer, watching it as harmlessly flew over the man's head. What I want to say, Herr Osenberg, is that the guns are able to penetrate the heaviest tanks that match our enemies, which they wield. If we were to upgrade them, they would be a match for anything the Americans or Japanese have. The engineer spoke rapidly, trying to diffuse the situation, and it worked. Osenberg took a deep breath and sat back down. Oh, sorry about that. I got a little carried away anyway. You want more funding for new guns? Osenberg said, his voice a little strained. Yes, Herr Osenberg, of course. We can use the old ones. They function well enough, but... And it wouldn't cost any money or time to keep them, but these new guns could help push the lag into greatness. Osenberg held it in his laugh. He already knew he had lost his temper once. Now was not the time to make himself seem like a lunatic. Besides, perhaps new guns would make the Liger a functional machine. He thought about it for a moment before responding. Sure, get the guns ready. Zeros, uh, the jewel of the German engineering. Holy, oh, I want to say a bad word, but wow. Don't fix what isn't broken with a mobile fortress. Oh my gosh. Minus 30% attack, more speed, a little more defense, less research speed, a way better production cost. 140%? 100% ah. Go big or go home, right? Das Liger. Fear of Goring is officially decreed the most recent MBT design project shall be classified as Das Liger pro Panzer. Or Das Liger. With this declaration, those who manufacture Panzer Camp Bagen have since become emboldened and encouraged in their work, thereby increasing the development and research capacity for future designs. The next fast stacks of research money and grant funding are well on the way. Given the efficiency of the German scientific machine, we're certain that this will not incentivize corruption or budget budgetary bloat in any way. Utterly foolproof. Nice. The first Liger's. The t Leaguer's first test. So, this is the Leaguer I've been told about. Yes, my fear. 
Goring examined the machine as if it were an actual wild beast, his eyes flicking between the whole crew and the two 105mm cannons attached to the front. His gaze lingered on the guns along us, as if he could already imagine the cannons obliterating American tanks. The three men crew in the prototype watched closely as the Fuhrer continued his loop around the tank, taking in every last bit of it. Finally, he motioned to his aides in the party of the officials, departed for a nearby hill from which they could observe the tests. In a moment, the tank revved its engine and sped down the course. Goring watched intensely, gazing through the pair of binoculars he had been provided with occasionally. He'd make a side comment to one of the engineers, praising the speed of the tank or commenting on its majestic appearance. However, as the test went on, the praise began to fade. The Liger, despite its beginning appearances, seemed to struggle as the test continued. The thing was only able to complete its shooting at a pace that barely trailed the Leopard. Despite the twin guns' supposed strength, the engine, which once launched the Liger around the trials in a flash, began to pour black smoke in a final coup de grace. The Liger turned to fire upon its final targets, only for the first gun to be blown out of its mounting, flipping backwards and tearing through the roof of the tank before slamming into a halt in the soft mud. The ensuing explosion obliterated the crew cabin and all unlucky men inside. The elite engineer instinctively looked over for the fear's reaction. Goring's eyes, now eyes cold, seemed to look straight through the man. Without a word, he and his entourage departed, leaving the engineers to pick up the pieces of the project, both figuratively and literally. Yeah, at least it was a, uh, you know, prototype. Get the next test. Corruption increase? Get Raymer on board. That's legal now to decrease military's influence. Change some names. Will decrease military's power based on the corruption. Get Spot involved. Dust League will now decrease military's power and influence greatly. That sounds really good. Pump up more rea yep. reactors, yes. Um, anything else down here? Also, we did adapt in the infantry. We did get enough support equipment, so we're pretty good about that. Um, anything else here? Oh, has completed the focus dust Liger. Liger? Liger. Effects in seven days if it is not completed. So, we're good. Wait, what? What? Skip the next test. Uh, it seems like we gotta do that one. Military consume will rise. So how much will this go down then if we don't do this? Decrease the loyalty of the militaries by a small amount. By a small amount. Um, and doing this one, skip the next test. Ah, eh, 5% more corruption is not bad, right? A little stuff we can do here, but... Corruption is 0.1. It's, it's alright, we're, we're okay. A quick meeting. I told you it wouldn't work, Herman. I've effing told you. And you ignored me. Osenberg took another sip of his drink before setting it down. The fear himself sat behind his desk, reading another report, refusing to look into Osenberg's eyes. This is a disaster. The tank is terrible. Ah, oh, I saw Werner, but now isn't the time to lay blame. We need solutions, and we need them fast, Herman responded. His voice was calmer than Osenberg thought it would be. His tone only frustrated Osenberg more. Did you not understand what this meant? Easy for you to say. This is my butt we're talking about here, Herman. Osenberg finished off his drink in one large swig. Herman said nothing and said, staring off into space. For a moment, Osenberg thought he might have died there and then. After an uncomfortable pause, Herman's gaze turned to Osenberg and he began to speak. Look. Vanna. The solar tank was built off Shona's and Raymond's idea. Osenberg scoffed. Of course, Herman would blame someone else for this. Goring's eyes steeled, and Osenberg shut himself up. Now listen to me. We show the Liger off to the public in a parade soon. We'll get Sean and Raymond to give speeches. We tie them to the project. Then, when it comes out the Liger is a mess, we point to them. They have the idea. They want the tank. They look like fools. We get out unscathed. Everyone wins. Is that all right? There was another silence. Osenberg hid his surprise under a lay of discontent. He didn't think Goring had it in to think that quickly. Yes, yes. I can work with that. But you better remember this, when they come up with another genius idea. <laughs> Hammond, I'll see you soon. And with that, Osenberg grabbed his card and left the office. His mind a sea of anger and frustration. Nobody needs to know. I would love to do that, but get more nuclear reactors, baby. Yeah, boy. Change some names. Decrease military's power based on corruption. Sure. Oh, we can also get the next test. When are we going to get it done? In about six days. You know what? We can skip the next test, too. Slightly more corruption is not bad, right? Point one. Hey, it's okay. We got nine reactors, though. That's really nice. Uh, declare the helicopter fleet. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, and we're almost done with the agency, too. We should be done by the next episode, so. Well, close. At least close to none. Um, anything else up here? Not really. No. Cool. Ah, uh, the March of the Lager. And now, may I introduce to you my esteemed superior and hero of all Germans, Field Marshal Ferdinand Schwerner. The crowd roared as Raymer welcomed Schwerner to the stage, and Osenberg clapped with him. His seat, stationed just to the right of the podium, gave him a stellar view of the Field Marshal as he began. Outwardly, he kept his smile up as he pretended to listen to Schwerner's words. Inwardly, however, his mind was shot through and through with panic. The plan that he and Goring had hammered out seemed to be going according to so far, but so many things could go wrong. If Schwerner found out, the result could be catastrophic. If the plan was leaked, it would prove a massive embarrassment to Goring's administration. Even if the plan went correctly, what if Schwerner and Raymer managed to pass Pass to the blame themselves. It would eventually find its way back to the GDRWI, if not Osenberg himself, and then he would have another mess to deal with. Besides, how much he had kept 
how much had keeping the Liga's poor performance secret from the military already cost the Reich, bribing that many people paid a healthy price, and there's no guarantee that one hadn't snitched. Olsenberg realized that the people around his chair were now looking at him, and he stamped out of his thoughts. A sound of applause and Shorn's voice mixed together, and Olsenberg looked to see Shorn pointing to him, contemplating his work, he assumed. He quickly brought back his smile and waved to Shorn. The two made more eye contact, and for a moment, Olsenberg thought he saw something more than just a standard complimentary glance in the field marshal's eyes. Perhaps he was just being paranoid, but it felt like Shorn knew. The plan goes ahead. Ah, Der Lig Der Liger? I thought it was Das Liger. Give them control. Wait, what? Increase influence and power? No, 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 no. What, what, why? Why would we do that? Get Raymer on board? Decrease Let's Skip the next test. Okay, so we failed. Huh. Oh. Maybe we weren't supposed to do that one yet. Oh. Well, oh well, whatever. Hey, I wanted to get this one done just because this is a short little diversion from, um... You know, just doing all conquesting, which I want to do more conquesting. Don't get me wrong. I really, really do. But we will do more conquesting, hopefully, in the next episode. I, there's so much I want to get done, though. There's just all these focuses. Look at all, look at all this. This is so much. And it's already 1970, mid-1970. So we definitely have to do that one, but still. But I want to end with us doing the ring hole and doctrine, because I want to make sure our Navy's the best in the world by the time we go to war. Our fleet may not be the greatest on Earth, but there's always room to improve. Even now, the dudes in America and Japan race to build their fleets back up, attempting to take back the title of Masters of the Sea from us. If we simply sit back and rest on our laurels as they did when, like, when we caught up to them, we will once again find ourselves outclassed, outgunned, and outman outmanned. Innovative thought is required. Luckily, we have the greatest source of innovative thought on the Earth, and his name is Herman Goring. Afua, in another brilliant display of his intellect, has proposed a new plan to keep the uh, Kriegsmarine one step ahead of the American and Japanese dogs, the Ring Ringhorn Doctrine. Essentially, the Ringhorn Doctrine is running with the concept of bigger is better. What better way to, to outclass those that challenge us than with the largest, biggest ships on Earth? Not only will we save all manpower, one captain on a super battleship can possibly put out as much fire as three normal battleships, but we shall truly have pride to the fleet to look proudly upon. Our ships will block out the sun, and the enemy shall submit to our will or be crushed underneath our keel. For now, however, our ambitions must be more humble, for our harbor, as great as they are, are simply not able to take on the raw tonnage of these giant gigantic hulks. We must upgrade our facilities to the highest standard if we wish to accommodate our, the raw power of this new class of ships. Super carriers, oh my gosh, it'd be so cool. Super heavy battleships, yes. They're training, <laughs> yeah, they're battleships are our cruisers. I remember that was one of the comments saying, he, he, that's just that's just awesome. German Leviathans, oh my gosh. The German Armada, um, since we're still researching stuff, I don't mind actually going this way too, match them. Another unfortunate roadblock has gotten into the way of our great plans for naval dominance, size. Though money is being poured into the Kriegsmarine at an astonishing rate, the fact remains that we're playing for, um, behind here. Hitler, glorious as he was, made a serious errand in ignoring the Kriegsmarine. And now our Navy is seriously outnumbered by both the Americans and Japanese, who have spent much of the last 20 years building their fleets to enormous sizes. By now, it will take an incredible amount of resources to be able to catch up in numbers. However, where we lack in numbers, we shall excel in strength and skill. Each of our ships must be perfect in killing machines, crewed by only the best and brightest. While they flounder about with mediocre designs and average crews, the guided hand of our restoration paired with their own stellar crews will shatter them. As the average Panther was equivalent to the 10 T-34s, so too will our ships be equivalent to 100 of theirs. Great. Um, I do want you to know that... Uh, we're going to hit the oil crisis, and I don't know what's going to happen. We're probably going to hit really, really hard by the oil crisis, but we'll see what happens. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And uh, and the last few comments that I did not address yet were that uh, you guys recommend that I try out Cold War Iron Curtain. Uh, you guys enjoy my thumbnails, which I try to make edgy thumbnails as best as I can. And I should have invaded Scotland. We'll get to that eventually. Trust me, we will. I promise you that. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.